no matter what variant of k-means you're running, be it regular k-means with a random initialization of the cluster centers or k-means plus plus where we have a smarter initialization of the cluster centers, we need to know what k is before we begin any of those processes. And up until this point, we have been using data where we knew what the k was ahead of time or we automatically assumed that we knew the k value. But if that was not the case, as it often is with real data that we're gathering, we won't know that k value ahead of time, how do we go about and find it? And the way to think about this is to think about different possible values for k, imagining that we have kind of a constant data set and what's going to be happening to the heterogeneity as a function of k. So let's start when k is very small. When k is just one, all we're doing is finding some measure of center of the data that we have, but we would generally expect if k means and clustering is appropriate for our data, that there would be more than one cluster. So when k is equal to one, we should expect the heterogeneity to be rather large in that many points ought to be generally far away from where this particular point is. So we should have a whole large heterogeneity. However, we could operate on the total other end of the spectrum where every single observation is its own thing. We think of having as many clusters as we have observations or data points. And in that case, our heterogeneity will be zero because everything will be a cluster center and there won't be any distance between the observation and the nearest data center. So if K is as small as possible, our heterogeneity should be rather large. When k is as large as possible, our heterogeneity should be non-existent and should be a zero value, and our heterogeneity should always be a positive value. So we can gather from this that as k increases, in general, heterogeneity should decrease. However, as is made clear from the last case that we considered, where we have just as many cluster centers as we have observations, that should definitely be an indication of overfitting. If nothing in your data set is even remotely similar to each other, and the best measure of similarity is for every single point to stand as its own cluster, then there's no point in running clustering or k-means in the first place. So somewhere in between, there needs to be a happy medium. And we'd like to know from graphing the heterogeneity, is it possible to identify what the proper k-value is by graphing heterogeneity as a function of k. So I've shown here some examples below. One of the examples we've done already, which is where we created data that would have three clusters. And over here, I've run that process again, but where there ought to be four visible clusters. So both of these data sets were fabricated in order to have three cluster centers and four cluster centers. I've run something like 20 iterations of a k-means algorithm and measured the lowest heterogeneity out of those 20 iterations, and then I've graphed those values here. And what you can see is that for both examples, we see the trend that we assumed we would see. The heterogeneity starts high when k is equal to one and decreases as k gets larger and larger. However, you can see for these examples that heterogeneity decreases rather quickly in the beginning and then starts to flatten out and decrease rather slowly. Decreases very quickly in the beginning and flattens out and decreases rather slowly. And in fact, you can see for both of these examples that when the heterogeneity stops decreasing quickly and starts to flatten out, that in both examples here is precisely where the number of clusters is right. In essence, we always know that if we add another cluster center, in general, our heterogeneity should get better. But when we stop seeing vast improvements in the heterogeneity as k is increasing, that's probably an indication that our data is overfit and that we don't really need that many cluster centers. So the process by which we'll identify how many k values is appropriate for our data is a little bit of an ad hoc method where we take a look at the heterogeneity as k varies and we watch the heterogeneity decrease and when it stops decreasing quickly we key in on that k value as being the most appropriate for our particular data.
Now, last but not least, I want to show you two things about k-means and clustering that are built into Python. If you look at the sklearn manual for all types of clustering things, they have some beautiful examples of data sets and many, many different clustering algorithms that you could use and how they perform on a collection of very different looking types of data. So we have k-means over here, and as we've seen, k-means doesn't perform particularly well on this circular or curvy kinds of data, but for something like this, k-means performs rather decently. There are other clustering methods that perform rather well on this circular and curvy data, as you can see here. And so if you find that our k-means algorithm is not a particularly good fit for the data that you observe or the clusters that you observe from your visual, you can always look into different kinds of clustering methods exist, particularly already built into the sklearn library through Python. What we do know will be true about each of these algorithms is that the methodology that we've discussed in these videos about how do we determine the right number of cluster centers and how do we measure heterogeneity and things of that nature, the big picture tends to be the same between any of these different clustering algorithms. And it's more about changing up your distance function or changing up where you put your cluster centers that makes a difference for these different types of methods. And I'd also like to point out to you that if we use the sklearn's help manual on clustering and k-means, we can start taking a look at the parameters that are involved there. And by default, the built-in k-means mechanism inside of sklearn, it has two different options for initialization of your cluster centers. It has k-means plus plus and it has random. By default, it chooses k-means plus plus. So what's built into sklearn will automatically be this smarter version of initialization that we've discussed in these videos. Also by default are the number of iterations that will be performed when the k-means algorithm is run. So not only will a default call to this function from the sklearn library use the k-means plus plus algorithm, by default, it's going to run k-means 10 times, and it will give you the best output in, of those 10 runs in terms of heterogeneity. And there are other things that you can look at and change and tool around with, with the built-in version of k-means inside sklearn, but the very first three parameters are how many clusters do you need, do you want your initialization to be through plus plus or random, and how many times do you want me to run this algorithm so that I can get you the best heterogeneity. So these are important concepts. They're tools that will carry over between different types of clustering algorithms, and they're the very first three things that Python thinks of when it thinks of clustering.